Truth for Kids, where we'll be looking together at animals in the Bible and learn how we can read our Bibles and spend time with God every day. Well, our animal for today is, drum roll please, the rabbit. Here are some pictures of rabbits for all of you. And no guys, we are not going to be learning about Easter today. Here's a fun fact about rabbits. Did you know they can't live off carrots alone, even though cartoons of Bugs Bunny and Peter Rabbit tell us otherwise? Carrots actually have a lot of sugar in them, and they can cause tooth decay in rabbits. So, um, have you ever imagined a rabbit going to the dentist? <laughs> rabbits actually prefer green things when they're in the wild, like different kinds of grasses and weeds. So kids, I think we can all learn from rabbits. Eat your green veggies and save sweets for a now and then treat to avoid the dentist. So before we look at our passage in the Bible where we can read about rabbits, can you guys remember the tool that we were learning about last week that helps us to understand the Bible? It's the same thing that we use to wash our hands. Yep, that's right. It's the SOAP tool. S stands for scripture, O for observation, a for application, and P for pray. So let's dive right in. What passage of the Bible are we reading together today? Well, today we'll look at Deuteronomy 14 verses 1 to 8. Deuteronomy is the fifth book of the Bible, and it's the last book in a group of books that we call the Pentateuch. It was written by Moses. You know who he is, right? And it's like his farewell speeches to God's nation, the Israelites. So God's people have just been rescued from Egypt and they are about to enter the promised land. And in Deuteronomy, Moses tells a new generation of God's people to obey everything that God commanded them. So let's read Deuteronomy 14 verses one to eight. You are the children of the Lord your God. Do not cut yourself or shave the front of your heads for the dead, for you are a people holy to the Lord your God. Out of all the peoples on the face of the earth, the Lord has chosen you to be his treasured possession. Do not eat any detestable thing. These are the animals you may eat, the ox, the sheep, the goat, the deer, the gazelle, the roe deer, the wild goat, the ibex, the antelope, and the mountain sheep. You may eat any animal that had a, has a divided hoof and that chews the cud. However, of those that chew the cud or those that have a divided hoof, you may not eat the camel, the rabbit, or the hyrax. Although they chew the cud, they do not have a divided hoof. They are ceremonially unclean for you. The pig is also unclean, although it has a divided hoof. It does not chew the cud. You are not to eat their meat or touch their carcasses. So observation, what is this passage all about? What do we see in it? So this passage is about certain animals that God's people are allowed to eat and other animals that they're not allowed to eat. Our animal of the day, the rabbit, is one of the animals they are not allowed to eat. So which kinds of animals can they eat? We find our answer in verse six. Let's read that again. You may eat any animal that has a divided hoof and that chews the cud. So if an animal has a split hoof and it chews the cud, so that means when it's chewed food, this is really gross, but when it's chewed its food and it comes back up from its stomach and it chews it again, that means it chews the cud. That's disgusting. But anyway, God's people can eat these animals. They are clean animals. And any animal that doesn't do both these things are not allowed to be eaten. They're unclean. So why on earth would God make rules about certain animals his people can eat and certain that, he can't, that they can't? Well, this answer is in verse 2. In your Bible, when you read the word for, it usually means that the reason for something is going to follow. So in verse two, it says, you cannot do these things because for you are the people are holy to the Lord, your God. So the rule about which animals to eat and which not is about holiness. Now, what does it mean to be holy? 
it does not mean <laughs> to be full of holes like these pants over here. They really don't keep me warm in the winter. The wind can come straight through. <laughs> it means to be separated or set apart for God. If I set my carrots apart from my peas on my plate so they don't touch, my carrots are set apart for me. But to be holy means to be set apart for God. You see, God is holy. That means he's without sin. And he wanted his people to be like him. So other nations around the Israelites, they ate all kinds of animals. But God gave them special food rules to make sure that they stand out, that they're different from everyone around them. And that would mean that other nations would look at them and know that they belong to the one true holy God. So being clean or unclean doesn't mean that the animal has had a nice bubble bath or that it's full of dirt. <laughs> no, if God's people ate clean animals, it meant that they were holy. And if they ate unclean animals, they were being unholy. So if I had to put this passage in my own words, I would say that God wants his people to be different, to be set apart for him. Now let's get to our application. What does this mean for us? today. Ever since Jesus came, there aren't any special food rules for God's people anymore. In Acts 10, so that's in the New Testament, towards the back of your Bible, Peter, one of Jesus' closest friends, has a dream and God shows him that there are no more food rules anymore. God's people can eat anything. But God still wants us, people who trust in Jesus and now belong to him, to be different, to be set apart for God. He wants us to live in a way that shows that we have been rescued by God and that we belong to him. God wants us to be holy, just like he wanted the Israelites to be holy. And how can we be holy? Well, Jesus summed all of God's rules up into two big rules. Number one, love God more than anything or anyone else. And two, love people as you love yourself. And we can find these in Matthew 22. So that's what we should do to be holy. But to be holy, we should also not do certain things. We also have things like rabbits that God wants us to avoid. So you are allowed to have rabbits as pets, guys. <laughs> but certain things that we do are not holy or sinful. And that's things like lying or stealing or cheating, saying mean and bad words, disobeying your parents. I wonder, can you guys think of a few things that are unholy or sinful that God wants us to avoid? We all know though that it's really hard to be holy. God's people couldn't keep his rules no matter how hard they tried. And we can't keep God's rules, no matter how hard we try. But God didn't wait for the Israelites to first obey and then to rescue him. No, he rescued them first. And then he gave them rules to live like people who are rescued. And it's the same for us. Jesus rescued us while we were still sinners. God rescued us even though we didn't obey his rules. Jesus obeyed God's rules for us when he lived on earth and he took the punishment on the cross for all the times that we broke them. Once we trust in Jesus, we are rescued from our sin and we belong to God. And God wants us then to live as people who are rescued so that our lives will look different from everyone else around us, everyone who's not rescued yet. We will still keep breaking God's rules every day until we are made perfect one day when Jesus returns. But just like the Israelites did that again and again and again and again, and God kept loving them, God will keep loving us. If we trust in Jesus, God will forgive us. And the best thing of all is that he gives us the Holy Spirit, who is also God, to be with us and to help us be holy. Let's pray together about everything that we've read today. God, you are holy. You are perfect without any sin. You are always good. 
and you want us to be like you. But God, we know it is so hard to be holy all the time and nothing we do, no matter how hard we try, we keep breaking your rules. But thank you, God, that you still love us and that you sent Jesus to die for us so that we can belong to you even though we still sin. God, I pray that you will help us um, to be holy, to live in a way that makes you so, so happy. Please let the Holy Spirit change our hearts every day to live as people who love you and belong to you. In Jesus' name, amen.